Hi, I'm Scott Humphreys at Caliva Process Solutions and today we're going to be talking about the variable mix time experiment using the mixer torque rheometer. Often after the binder addition phase it's difficult to know whether you've overmixed or undermixed your granulation. The machine adds the binder to the mixer bowl and then mixes and logs the torque for a period of time. The resulting graph pinpoints the optimum mix time. This is important as after the liquid binder addition phase your liquid will permeate through the dry powders at a different rate depending on your formulation. If you undermix you can experience inconsistencies throughout the batch in your production granulation equipment. If you overmix you can start to force the liquid binder back out of the powder again and again experience inconsistencies. So to begin our experiment we need to create a method. So on the main screen we click on methods and we click on view method or create method. So we need to create a method because we're creating a new experiment. So we select variable mix time and then choose a template to use. Click on continue. When we call up that it's asked us to create a new name because we're obviously creating a new method. Um, we then get the opportunity to add other data like a description of the method, what material we're using, batch codes, lab reference numbers, um, the speed of the motor, how long we measure the empty bowl for at the start of the experiment, so that gives us our control, and then the weight of the sample which is 15 grams on this occasion, mix for 30 seconds, log the torque for 30 seconds. Then we add the binder, which on this occasion is 6 millilitres, mix for 30 seconds, log for 30 seconds, and then we add those mix periods in using the add row button at the side, like that. So that's told the machine what to do, in what order, and how many mix cycles to run. So we now create the method, and the machine tells us it's created the method. So then to use the method we've just created, you click on view method, select variable mix time, and then our new method will appear at the bottom of the list now. Click on continue and the data that we just entered is populated. There is an option here if we wanted to modify anything, we click on the modify method, but we're going to start the experiment now. So. This is where we give the individual experiment a name and the details. So we type in a name, we've already got the material batch code and lab reference there from the method and then we just put a description in the description field there if we want to and then the name of the operator because we can use that to search for results afterwards. So we click on start the experiment and then the machine prompts us to measure the empty bowl so we check the bowl's empty, click on enter and you can see the mixer blades moving around there where the machine measures the torque with nothing in the bowl. So this, this negates the need for lots of calibration. So we've now been asked to load our 15 gram sample of powder into the mixer. So take off the safety cover, the lid of the mixer, and then we add our sample into the mix chamber. Replace the lid and the safety cover. And then we add our pipette from the syringe pump on the top so we can add our binder. Click on OK. So now the machine will begin to mix the dry powders and then add the binder in one go. So you can see there's an instant torque response there as soon as the binder's added. And we've run our experiment. So we click on continue. It saves the data. And now we can go and have a look at our results. So we click on the results tab and then we've got the choice of individual ones or you can compare experiments. This is the individual experiment, so we look at variable mix time. Choose today's date. 
and then filter the results. So we can then go down and see the results from today. So it's the last one there. So we click on get results. And as you can see, we receive a chart. The first section from zero to 50 is where the machine measures the dry powders. Then the binder is added in one large addition based on the measurement we made in the multiple addition experiment previously. The torque then rises quite quickly. And as you can see, the torque varies on the way up until we reach a peak around 540 seconds. Now, that is the peak torque of our mix and therefore the optimum mix time. Uh, I mentioned previously that under mixing can cause inconsistencies and you can see where we, if we over mix, if we mix for say 650 seconds, the torque lessens and this could be because we're drying out the material or we're forcing the liquid binder back out again. And now we've got a table here where you can see the torque readings in actual figures over the time period that we mixed. Now this data can then be exported in a report in PDF or Excel or raw data format. We'll just look at PDF here because it's nice and easy to, to read. Click on print the report and then we can create the PDF document. And here we have it. So we've got the time and date of the experiment. We've got the header information here. So all the information we put in on the method for the type of material, batch codes, that type of thing. And then here's our actual method, the procedure that the machine goes through. So you can see the sample weight, the amount of binder to add, and then the cycles of mixing. And then we've got our graph with the torque readings on it. The peak point on that graph is the optimum mix time. So now we can look at the other option, which is to compare results. So we can look at maybe two or three slightly different formulations on the same graph to see how they differ. So we can click on the date, filter the experiments again, and then we get a list of the experiments we've done today. We can choose the ones we want to compare and add them into the box on the other side, like that, and another one. So we get the results of that. And what we'll get now is a chart created where you can see all three traces of the three separate experiments and can compare. We can then export that data Again, we'll choose PDF this time. We create our PDF. And then you can see that the graph's been added onto the report with a key at the side to tell you which color trace relates to which experiment. We hope you found this video interesting and informative. For more information, please visit caliva.com. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to email us on info at Thank you.